Hello, welcome back to All for United WFC. I actually remember that to the intro this time. If you'd have watched the channel, the men's channel last night, I completely forgot and had a complete meltdown on what to press. Uh, but there we are. Hope everyone's recovered from yesterday. Obviously, if you follow the men's team, a uh, nice uh, result for us lifting the trophy. You can check out the match reactions to that yesterday. It was, you get to see a half drunk John Commode on there as well, which was quite funny towards the second half of the show. Um, and me and Barry are also on there alongside another John as well uh, on that channel. Um, we are going to talk about the Durham game. Obviously, at the moment, we're all kind of, if you see, is looking away. We're not we're not being rude on purpose. We are watching uh currently watching someone open an Amazon box um on the one show, but we are waiting for the FA Cup draw. Um let's talk about that then to start with in terms of who we want. Um like I said we'll get into the game in a little bit once the draw has been made. Um we know the other seven teams that are there. I should have it in front of me. I, I don't I'm sorry, but so I'll uh, <laughs> come back to that one. Um Charlie, is there anyone um, obviously I don't want us all to say, because we're all going to say we want to avoid Chelsea, but is there anyone in particular that you look at and think, I'd like to draw them, or are you just not fussed really who we get? Um, I would just like, I think I said, I would just like us to not draw someone who has a rubbish playing surface, because we really struggle with that. So anyone that's got a proper pitch, um, I think we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. I want to avoid City, just got sick of them. We always get them. We always get them in the knockouts of the Cups. Um, but apart from that, I don't mind. Like, does it matter if we play Chelsea now or in the final? Probably not. We have to play them at some point because they'll get to the final um, as long as they don't play us first. Um, so, no, I don't really mind. Fear nobody. Just prepare for whoever it is well enough. Yeah, and there's a, <clears throat> a lot of people actually saying that home about home draw. Um, so, yeah, oh. the teams are Birmingham, Villa. Um, is it Lewis or Lewis? Or how, like, I can never say that right. I always get corrected either way. Reading, Chelsea, Brighton and City are on mm -hmm. the two. So, obviously, a lot of WSL, as you expect, um, at this stage of the competition. But, Alex, for yourself, is there anyone you want, want to avoid? How are you feeling on it? Um, Yeah, I just think anyone, mm -hmm. really. Um, But, again... Like we said, probably a home a home game would probably be better. I feel like we're a lot more confident at home. Um, but like Charlie said, whether we play Chelsea in the final or not, it's it's going to happen at some point. So yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Like Shane, when we talk about the draw, you'd expect Chelsea if it's if they're not facing us in the next round, you'd expect to see Chelsea in the final because they just they're just beating everyone at the moment um, until a couple of weeks when we at least they're through to the quarterfinals uh, by actually winning two games this time as well <laughs> yeah I mean is there, is, is there anyone that you want or would you want to get that Chelsea draw now do you want to try and knock them out early and then have a, a kind of easier semi-final final well the fixing sods will give us Chelsea and they'll give us Chelsea away so we have to go down there two weekends back to back won't they um, no, I mean yeah I'd You'd like to avoid them, I think, because you know what they can do. And we've got the league game coming up against them as well. Similar to Charlie, I'd, I'd want to avoid City just because I'm sick of playing them in the cup because we always play them. You know, we had them two years running. Um, I think from an ideal point of view, I'd almost want Blues and Lewis to be drawn with each other because then one of those goes through to the semi finals. And then if we can get like a Brighton, a Reading at home or something, or a Villa maybe. I think I'd take that as an ideal scenario, but as everyone else has said, you know, you beat what's in front of you, don't you? So whoever we get, the reaction's still the same. You've got to beat whoever it is. Yeah, and Barry, for yourself, is it? Do you prefer a home draw and a away draw? What are you, what are you wanting for this one? Oh, no, I don't necessarily prefer a home or an away draw. Uh, I kind of agree with Charlie. And so far as if we get Lewis, I probably don't want to go to their ground for it. Um, because there's no guarantees what their, their playing surface is like. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Chelsea get a Man City this year. Uh, this year is a year of change for Manchester United, as you well know. Uh, so this is going to be the year where we don't have to play either of those awful people um, at this point, so we can actually have a bit of a run. So I, I, I'm hopeful that we're going to get Lewis, but yeah, preferably at LSV. Um, I don't really want Aston Villa either. I feel like I've had enough of them. Um, I think I'd like Lewis or Birmingham, just with something different. You know, it's nice to have something different in the calendar rather than just the same old people time and again. So, yeah, that's what I'd like. Well, um, Shane, you might know, or anyone might know this. Obviously, we've got a loan, uh, well, Tara's obviously at <coughs> Birmingham. Would, would she be able to play? I'm assuming not. Or would it be down to us? I think it's it one of those where we'd have to give permission. Probably had to for Rambo before like Hansen could have played against us if we'd have 
allowed it, but I, I assume, to be honest, that it just carries across all the domestic competitions, and if they're on loan there, they can't play against parent club. That's fair enough. <laughs> it's closer to France than to Man. I mean, it probably is. Well, I don't know. I think it is. So <laughs> that's fair enough. I mean, yeah, for me, it's definitely got to be. Uh, I'd like a home draw. I think, to be honest, that's the key, isn't it? Shane, you made the point. I completely forgot. Isn't this tie? It's played after the Chelsea gets the weekend after, isn't it? Before yeah. a break. So if we get Chelsea, then you're looking at or City. We're looking at a possibility of a Chelsea back to back or a Chelsea City um, in the space of seven days. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm so. I'm so torn on it because I said I don't really want the easiest team in it. Obviously, number four is we're looking at for for Lewis there, but I don't really want them because then everyone just goes, "Oh, you had an easy route to the final." I kind of want us to be tested a little bit now. Um, so I don't care if it's an easy run to the final. Who well, cares about that? We don't care about that if we win it. But no, um, <laughs> Durham Dor- have never been traditionally easy for us, have they? So that was quite <laughs> refreshing great. yesterday. Um, but yeah, I'd prefer maybe a, a Villa bred in. Brighton. Um, to be fair, we can beat all of them. We can beat anyone in that draw, but um, yeah, Reading we kind of owe one to because they're the ones that put us out of the quarters in the first season, so it would be nice to uh, pay them back a little bit for that. Can I um, also say Sang's put on here we always get City. I just like but it doesn't count if we're in the final, mate. <laughs> See, I right. want that. I-, I want a United City final at Wembley. That would be sick. I think that would be quite good. And I think, to be fair, TV companies probably want that as well. <laughs> um, you know, because that would sell pretty well a uh, Manchester derby in the final. Um, I can't remember the last time we've seen one of those, a Manchester derby in a final. You go back to the, the want- Community Shield. Community really Shield, weren't it, I think? 2011, 12? Something like that. You know, obviously, they've already been boasting like high ticket sales. Do I would hope, would you assume they've... Could you talk about the, the two Manchester sides if they got there? That would be a big sell. Um, but would you assume they've kept tickets back, depending on who the clubs are going to be? You'd hope so. I think they do. But some tells me in the past, other teams that have gone there have always been given a section. Yeah, because I was at the Arsenal Chelsea one with my brother. That was like the final of the season before, but it had to be played later. And they had sections, but just because they've made quite a big deal about we've sold this many tickets for this like this season's FA Cup, we've sold yeah. this many. I don't oh. like it. I don't like the fact that they go on sale so early and, you know, you, 30,000 people have bought a ticket for a game that they don't even know the teams that are going to be playing I've in it. I've seen a lot of Arsenal fans ridiculous. that have bought tickets and are like, I'm not going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's where the problem lies, isn't it? I know in European competitions, you know, particularly on, on, on the men's side, people book hotels earlier in anticipation that you might get there because the prices skyrocket and flights skyrocket. They're, they're called um, Liverpool they're fans and that's because they hang on every word Jurgen Klopp says. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um you'd imagine the final yeah, I think that's what Shane was just saying there about getting some kind of, of allocation. We we'd certainly be pushing for it to get an allocation, put it that way, if we got there. And John's raised a point that's a very good that's a possibility as well. Looking at the both sides of the FA Cup draw, um, you can see I'm kind of stalling for it. I thought this, I thought this draw would be done by now. <laughs> I'm be honest. They are on the same weekend, aren't they? I think. Are they? I'm not sure. Who said, someone told me that they were. They're probably not. But... One moment, I shall have a look. Calendar out. Look at him. It's always weird with the women's one because it's, it's not the last game of the season, is it? It's done two weekends before or something. But That'll be the 18th and 19th of March. Who is it? Who's that? Is that March? Who's on you? That's oh. the, both quarterfinals. <laughs> Sam Marcus and Rashford. Oh, yeah, that's good. You may arise, all of you. Um, <laughs> but yes, he's, uh, so it would be Brighton away. We're obviously not going to have that game happening now uh, due to the fact that we're uh, well, provided we beat West Ham, obviously. I mean, that doesn't work too well, but in which case we will be playing Brighton away. There we go. So that's where we're up to. I know I'm wrong. Men's, men's finals, 3rd of June. Of it's, really late, it? it's, it's really yeah, late. It's, it's the week, it's oh. weekend after the last Premier League. Oh, there we go. Um, 
not gonna lie, like I said, I thought this draw would be done by now. It's now they said seven o'clock line bastards. They it's now it quarter past seven. Yeah, no, but uh, the last BBC one, they were doing it like from the off, and they were straight in and it's like they hidden on like the news <laughs> desk channel or whatever it was. So. <laughs> oh, hang on, here we go. There's people on the screen. Oh, finally. <laughs> Let me guess. Is it Rachel Finnis Brown? No, it doesn't look like her. Huh. No, it's the one who retired after like, flat, joining Liverpool. Flat, That's yeah. the one. Oh, is Sadly, it? it's gone back to Boys Zone and Frank Lampard. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's some geezer singing again. How did he get outside? He was inside a minute ago. <laughs> What's Trap door. Oh, Anthony Hopkins is playing the drums. That's interesting. Isn't this Queen? <laughs> it looks like Queen. It must be that. It is, isn't it? Oh, he's outside Buckingham Palace. And now he's back. That's magic. He was at Buckingham Palace and now he's back in there again. That's amazing. Um, Honestly, the magic of telly. Yes, TJ, we were, we're waiting for the draw. We were. <laughs> we, I thought let's not talk about the Durham game until the draw is made. Because I thought it'll be done in ten minutes. We could talk about who we've got and we can move on to the game. Uh, we are waiting for that <laughs> right now. Um, Barry, don't knock. Oh, someone's gone. I don't believe I knocked anybody. Nope. Did I knock Queen? Did I say, "Oh, what an outrageous band"? No, I did not. <laughs> I just said the drummer looked like Anthony Hopkins, which I think if you'll rewind it, you'll find was a fair comment. <laughs> so, he's just talking about knitting. I can't hear what he's saying, but he is on the couch. Um, it is. It's it's very much like that. It's a live watch along of the one show right now. <laughs> oh, I love Google Box. Oh, Google Box is so good. I don't know what's going on here. Um, Oh, yeah, back to space too far. Depends on how the draw goes. Charlie might break another phone. <laughs> no backpedaling at all. None whatsoever. Absolutely zero. Too fair, they're not a great band. Sorry. Did you say they're not a great band? No. Yeah, Connor, well done, taking the heat. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Has a host never had to kick themselves off a show before? <laughs> no. Tempt him. But we have got a replacement, just in case people on the men's oh, channel no. didn't see. <laughs> it's our new looky likey. <laughs> that is incredible. It's Con Con Connor Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I've renamed it. It's Cuddly Connor. Did it actually come with that hair, that bear? <laughs> I didn't make it. Right. I took a quiff and all. <laughs> Amazing. What a trip to build a bear that was. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So we have got a makeshift Connor now. So if he does drop out, there you go. I'm going to get some batteries and see what he does when you push here. Is he going to sign a football for us? Who knows? <laughs> Same haircut and everything. You've got it. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. <clears throat> this is the absolute epitome of I saw this and thought of you. <laughs> If we win the league, I'll grow the sideburns like that for you. <laughs> or I'll stick some on or something. I'll do a show with it. That will definitely make you added Eugene if you do that. So, <laughs> I don't know what's that. That's in reference to. True. <laughs> um, oh, see, I'm never alone with my uh, controversial views. <laughs> I mean, Mark, yeah. Mark's not very happy, but... <laughs> I mean, yes, Mark, the facts are I can, but he is very much capable of putting himself immediately <laughs> back in. So it's a fruitless exercise. Uh, believe me, I've tried. Um, in answer to that, I don't think she, I think, am I still top just by like a point? And Charlie's like one point behind me or something. Don't boast, Connor. <laughs> Questions there. I like how did that little rhetorical question rather than a definite, no, I'm definitely beating her. I was going to say, I, I thought I said that quite. Quite well, then. Trying to get into BBC iPlayer. Right, this is what's wrong with the modern world. No one has to remember passwords because of face recognition and thumb recognition. So it's really annoying me, this phone issue. No, Nat West, I don't know what the three gazillion passwords are that you require me to put in because you just do this. <laughs> whoop, and you let me normally in. So no, I don't know my password, my pin code, and my pin number, which apparently are three different things. <laughs> Oh. Oh, um, to be honest, we're going to have to at some point because yeah. we're now 15 minutes in and we oh. they're not even looking like they're going to be doing it anytime soon. Okay. That's very good. That's very good. Um, 
Should we just talk about the Vilda free kick to start with before we get into the game and everything else? Because not only was that a cracking free kick, but everything was perfect. It hit the top of the bar, the net sound as well when it hit the back of the net. Everything about that goal was just perfection. So I'll let, it's kind of a free for all. Let's just kind of talk about how good that free kick was because it was pretty, uh, pretty sensational. It, it, it surprised me that she took it, to be honest, because well, from where I was stood behind it, it Lining up, it looked like she was going to do a dummy run and then run off to the left of the wall and Katie was probably going to pass it to her, you know, and then we'd get snuffed out because we like to try these little short set piece routines at times and against Durham, I just think they'd have, they'd have saw it coming. So I was surprised when she actually hit it, but yeah, well, what a what a free kick. Brilliant goal. Is that, Shane, you've watched, obviously, and well, I think most of you have watched, obviously, United Women from the start. Is that the best free kick? United women have scored, would you say? Or do you think there's been a better I, I'm, I'm, I don't know about better in terms of like technicality of it, but I just, I'm still always a fan of the one Katie scored past City in the County Cup. That, that was always that's always gonna be a special one, I think. Yeah, it was well, that was special because it was against City. I do think I do think with the builders though, as as the goalkeeping's getting better, you do have to be um more precise and more accurate with where you're putting it. I'm not downplaying any that Katie scored or, or Alex Greenwood might have scored for United, but for quite a while, if you just got it on target, kind of either side of the keeper and a bit high up, it was going in. Whereas actually the female goalkeepers are much better now, they've massively improved. So I thought her, no one was getting near that. I think if there was a fella in goal, I don't think you get anywhere near that. Um, it was so quick, the ball moved so quickly and it, it was incredible how it dipped just as it was sort of like a couple of feet away from the bar. So, yeah, no chance. Absolutely phenomenal free kick. And I think it was good that Katie was stood there because if you're the opposition, you think she's taking that. You think something's happening here because she looks like she's approaching it from the right hand side. So she's potentially going to cross it. So that creates a little bit of confusion. Um, but I thought it was just brilliant. I loved a celebration. Um, I, I love any player that, that goes a bit bonkers and grabs the badge and, and makes a big fuss of that. So it was really good. And I think it was good for her um, to get that opportunity in place of Tooney, who I think we all thought was going to play. Um, but it was nice to see Vilda sort of lay down a bit of a, a bit of a marker. I think that was good for her. It's, I was going to ask Alex, what, what, end, where, what end were you sat at and whereabouts did, were you seeing that from? I was sat like perfectly in line with, where she was lined up, ready to take it, um, with obviously Katie, and obviously we've had we've had like that free kick against City was amazing, but that one it was just I thought that was the better one with Builder because she took a chance, like she's not been getting minutes, and then she's just gone for it, and she's just proven exactly what she can do, and like she's shown now that she can be starting especially in more games because we de we're depending on the same players to do the same thing. It's not a one-person team to do everything. So now we've got other players that can pull these out the bag and it does, it shocks the other teams because they're not prepared for it because, like you said, they're expecting Katie to take it. So when she's come running up, she's, she's smashed it. And that's a good thing. I can only think of Leah that's maybe took a free kick other than Katie. In, in recent times, and, and even then, I'm clutching at straws a little bit. I mean, it used to be Greenwood, didn't it, on set pieces? I think yeah. in that first season on all set pieces, it's got a pearl one at Leicester. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's just quite a bit of mix up yesterday. Yeah, with the with other set pieces, well, the double situations like corners, it wasn't just the same person, which I think is it's it's good. It's good to have that variety because, like I said, it creates that thing of right. Well, Wilder's taking the corner which we weren't expecting now. So what on earth is Zellum going to be doing? Where is she going to be? Because this is not what we planned for. And it does create a little bit of confusion. Um, so yeah, I think it's nice. I think it's nice to be a little bit less, maybe one not one-dimensional in a bad way, because our set piece has been brilliant, been really important to winning key things, but be less one-dimensional necessarily who has to be responsible for them all of the time. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And if something were to happen to Zellum that she can't play, you need to know you've got someone else who can who can plug that gap as well because set pieces are really important, particularly to us. Absolutely. I felt it was a really good goal from Builder, but I was also really intrigued by the build-up, getting the free kick, um, because that was really nice as well, really crisp passing. 
So the throwing comes in obviously from the left hand side. Katie Zellum gets it. She goes straight up, uh, up the wing there with the ball, straight to Builder. And her little pass, this is what was nice about it, it was her little touch that set Hannah Blundell free on the run. It was definitely a free kick, definitely a foul. And I think what was really nice then about that was, like you say, having Katie and and Vilda stood next to each other. It's good. This is, I think, what, what Mark Skinner is talking about when he says how she knits the team together and all of that. She's She's not got this ego. She's not, no, I'm the captain, I'm taking the free kicks, get away. She was quite happy. And clearly this had been something they must have worked on at some point. So, yeah, I thought it was absolutely superb, if I'm honest with you. Brilliant free kick and no more than she deserved for what I thought was quite a good performance overall. 100%. We're going to get on to a performance in, in obviously later in the show. It is the draw. Uh, they have just come on screen now. So we're finally 20 minutes in, going to see some uh, some draws. So well, let's... Well, we've got to see Arsenal score a goal first, obviously, yeah. and Chelsea celebrating from 2013. Because that's recent. Who's <laughs> the one that's played for every single London club? Going she was off her line. <laughs> I do oh, like it. Though, you know, it's, it's a man and a boy in the dark watching some sort of night animal. Is it really far behind online? No, that you, was you yeah know. online. It will be. Oh. Yeah, we, we're just on the. Well, I don't know about everyone else. Oh, wow. That's boring. <laughs> Why does that happen as well? I always have to mute you guys when there's a Man United men's game on. <laughs> yeah, I um, we are. But well, there you go. You get to hear our live reaction to it. Because I'm pretty sure most, well, whoever's watched, if we're watching it on TV, we should pretty much be in sync. Um. <laughs> well, they're now introducing the next person as well. <laughs> I think this is just talking about the goals. This was yesterday. The two 0 I think yeah, it's the it. Chelsea fans had a pretty decent chant about Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr, yeah, say, yeah, even, even with jet lag, like, she's better than you. <laughs> I rate that. To be fair, did you watch the game? Well, that got, Arsenal, uh... Arsenal were all over them, just not clinical. Sounds like us. Sums, <laughs> sums up their season, <laughs> doesn't it? Good, yeah, and Black Senius looked like she maybe hurt herself as well. I was half expecting us to come on screen then. Some kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> Imagine <weird thing>. that. <laughs> so yeah, we've got some fans this joining us. There's going to be five there. of us going, get on with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> got a show to do here. I'm intrigued to know who they've chose for United here. If there is going to be a United rep. Imagine. Uh, well, I'm not sure. Oh, that's number four. That's Lewis. Lewis being shown there. There's Aston Villa. Ooh. Wait, Lewis is playing Aston Villa? No, right. the draw. They're showing random fans at the moment. <laughs> Charlie, I think you need to pause us so you get us in sync. <laughs> We're number two. We are indeed. I said that with confidence without knowing. I think we are. Right, here we go. Ronnie <laughs> Keaton's open the bag. Is it Rona Keating? Number five. So Reading are at home. I'll take that to be fair if we get a Reading away. Reading away. <laughs> it is number Chelsea. Chelsea. six. So Reading v Chelsea. So that's Chelsea into the semi finals. There you go. Happy. Their expression right? didn't change. <laughs> <laughs> so Villa at Villa. Home, number three Villa at home I don't want this one either I have a feeling this might be us you know. no thank you please nice lady <laughs> you can fully see it can you're a Villa away number eight City so, Villa City so we, so we have got an easier that, draw, should, be a good, that yeah. should be a good game that. there's the two you were thinking and it's not happening it's United at home. home. Yes. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it we're going to have a long coach journey, aren't we? Yeah, this is... <laughs> there it is, Lewis. <laughs> is it? It is, yeah, yeah Lewis away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. on, is. Two weekends of early starts. Let's go. <laughs> oh, dear. I called it. 
Where even is that? Down Where south? Him? It's, yeah, it's down past. past it's in France. Then, it? <laughs> it's in France. Yeah, we're going back to Toulouse, guys. No, we're going to win. Hey. <laughs> I'll set them up for you, mate. <laughs> yeah, and I will finish them. Well, what do we think to that then? Lewis away. It's the easiest one that we all said. It's an away draw, which we said we didn't want. <laughs> Shocking but... pitch though, isn't it? So yeah, what's that? That pitch? probably levels it. <laughs> we haven't played them since the day we lifted the championship trophy. Quite some Correct. time. There. I'm trying to work out how far that is away. Because it's gonna it's a distance from my house. So it's gonna be even further. For, uh, for I think we just put it under the umbrella of it's a long way. <laughs> It's not Tipperary, mate. Oh, Ian's, Ian's happy, of course. He only needs to get one train. I don't even know where. Let me, let me go with this. I've never like, seen or heard or anything of it. So, so, uh, someone, someone say something while I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm totally going some, to Google that. Something. <laughs> something. There you go. There you. <laughs> oh, crikey. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So, yeah, Lewis to Lee is um, about four and a half hours. <laughs> Not if you're me. I live closer, you can please say. Yeah, I mean, I live closer as well, but well, still. The last I time I went down away. Brighton Way, Charlie, was yeah. the Euro game. Oh, yeah. Right. That wasn't too and bad, though, really, that, was it? That took, that took me about four hours. So That was traffic, though. That was traffic. <laughs> well, yeah, they shut off the M25, so... Do you remember the end of that game, Connor? Do you remember the end of that game? They took down all the signposts that told you which car park was which, and you, <laughs> you and me left each other. And then I phoned you, and I was like, "I'm lost. I don't know where my car is." Just walk... All of the signposts down. Just, just nuts, walking around some uni campus on our. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, has anything, anyone got anything else to add on on the draw? And like I said, we didn't want Charlie. You mentioned the pitch. Could that be a, a factor? You know, it's a yeah. I feel like I jinxed that now. What I, do think is, what I do think is, winner of quarter final three should have to play winner of quarter final four. I think that's how this should work. Sounds fair to me. And yeah. winner of quarter final one plays winner of quarter final two, obviously. Which perfect. Perfectly fair. Absolutely stunning. I think we're all delighted with that. I think you know, it feels positive. So it's good stuff. Yeah, positive it's stuff. yeah, it's a long, long coach journey again. But I'm sure uh, there'll be travel updates and all kinds of things from uh, from the support. Yeah, there is going to be a, a coach. Yeah, I was going to say I'm looking towards Shane on that one. <laughs> if there is going to be some kind of coach, I'm sure that'll be uh, communicated via the supporters club close yeah. to the time. Um, but yeah, there it is. So if you're just joining us, because I've just put the tweet out about it, uh, we're going to talk about Durham now, which is the opposite end of the country. Um, right, let's talk about the game then. We've spoken obviously about the Vilda goal. I can't remember too much else happening in the first half, apart from a really good uh, chance that Durham had uh, when we kind of lost possession and, and the Durham player, I can't remember for like me who it was, um, decides to take Mary up on her own, thank God, because if she looks up and passes it, I think we go 1-0 down. Um has anyone actually, before we go on to the second half, because that's where the main bulk of the action is, has anyone got anything else to add on the first half? Obviously, we spoke a little bit about the free kick. We're going to talk about Vilda's performance a little bit in the second as well. But is there anything else on the first half that anyone thinks is worth uh, worth bringing up on here? It, it highlighted how much that we still need to make, like do training or something on watching the back line because the amount of offsides being given a case in that first half was a bit ridiculous. It, I was having a few flashbacks, I think it was Leicester last season in the Cup game, I think it was, where it was just like every move we did, offside, offside. It improved second half, no doubt, but yeah, it's, they need to work on that. It, it feels a bit unnecessary as well. Yeah, I don't know if you agree, Shane, because we've got such pace in that forward line. I think Martin Garcia was starting at the time and Galton. Um, and Martha Thomas isn't slow either. It just seemed, yeah, it just seemed a little bit unnecessary. Um, it's just frustrating, isn't it? They made a point of mentioning it on the commentary as well. How many offsides there'd been. It was like a drinking game, which I didn't partake in. But that's what it was like. Um, but again, I don't think it, I don't think we were like toothless. I think we had a couple of good opportunities. I think Galton had one cleared off the line. Millie Turner had a good opportunity, but just headed it way over the bar. Um, and we weren't massively troubled. Like I know there was that, um, I think it was, um, what's her name? Someone Lambert who got the chance on, on about 30 minutes when, when Katie lost the ball. Even then, like I think 
I don't think that was an issue for her, really. I think I don't think that troubled her. It was straight at her because she didn't make the right decision. Um, but what what I really liked, and I will talk about, is how we then came out in the second half, how we came out and sort of... Okay. Sort Just a question for you, in fact, because John's is meant, and it does remind me, actually, because you seem to think that this was officiating rather than us. There was a lot of offsides in that first half. I think it was six or seven at half time, yeah. just from us. Was that? Yeah, I, I messaged and I said, these aren't these aren't all offsides. They weren't. It just, I don't know, it just, I don't buy it. I mean, we say it when we're there. They're not necessarily keeping, and I know they're not full time, but that is their job on the day. Like, they're not keeping up with, with the play. And when that's your one job, really, at that point, is to watch that that line. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what it looked like when you were there, perhaps, Alex and Shane, whether it was more obvious that they were offside, but there were times when it really felt like they weren't, and the players' reactions were so, like, vitrolic. Matt like, Thomas what? really got at one point. Yeah. So I think she got told off at one point to calm down because she she booted the ball at the, the signs on the side of the pitch when she got offside. She was, she was really, like, human. But you can tell that but at one point that the lino yeah. gave a goal kick and, and I thought he flagged offside again really late. So I was having a great old moan like about how long it took him to put the flag up until someone pointed out it was just a goal kick. <laughs> That's just, there were a lot because I'm always very critical anyway because last season we saw us get a lot of offsides and I always felt like the runner should be able to, to hold the line better. But as soon as you pointed out, Charlie, that it's actually maybe officiating rather than actually being offside, um, it did make a bit more sense. <laughs> um, I'm not going to try and guess your age <laughs> because the the Durham players were actually complaining about the United fans saying that this, the chants were disrespectful what, I've, heard so they I've heard the that the apparently the players were moaning and warned them oh, oh, God. they were all getting a bit I heard that this had apparently happened but no one's no one, no one certainly has sort of come over and said anything to us. So uh, we uh, there was a there's a young girl who was sat in front of me who was just she was just chanting the whole way through nothing nothing major just the normal chants. She one. got pulled towards the bench and told off. <laughs> what about the Durham lot? By someone who worked there, yeah, by the stewards that the the players had complained oh, that the chants were wow <laughs> wow. But that Unbelievable. Just set everyone off a bit more then. I almost yeah. remember to complain that they were piping in. If their fans were piping a horn off every time we were kicking the ball, which actually got to the point that we just mocked them because they kept blowing it every time we had a set piece, and then we scored from it. So, <laughs> at that point, to them. <laughs> I was going to say they wanted to be there when the, you know, in the in the cup in the county cup games at their place. You know, it's not exactly a friendly environment when you go up there. Jeez. <laughs> I, so, you know, it's it's returned. It's not Let's really try good. something. They had to try something, didn't they? Because they were being absolutely mollied. I'll, I'll give them their due. They travelled by yesterday. I think, I think mm. one of the stewards told us before and they were expecting sort of between 150 and 200 mm. Durham fans to turn up. And they'd they been given a, like an away section as well, which was quite pleasing to mm. see. So. They gave uh, Millie Turner a bit of a hard time, didn't they? Oh, well, that was just great. Was just because Millie, Millie floored one of their players. So every time then they were just booing Millie, which, like, that, that's, I don't mind that kind of thing because yeah. we'll do that. You know, just out of interest, though, did, did, Millie, did Millie complain to the stewards about that? Funny no. enough, I don't it's think Millie chair. gave oh. a toss. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> One kid, one kid chanting. That's a massive We did issue. think Millie had scored the header at one point. So, so we, we had that know. going, and then we realised Keats had nicked it on the line. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say about this comment. Mike's a bit upset that the that the lines were looked older. I, I saw on Twitter yesterday that some men's team got an eighty-two year old linesman. He'd been doing it for six decades, and I just sat there and thought to myself, "It's nice," because they were tweeting it as like, you know, look at this lad who's been really nice and put a load of effort in. And I'm just thinking, there's no way he's keeping up with you lot. And if he is, that says a lot about the league you're in. <laughs> <laughs> 82 years old, so I'm never going to whinge about a lines in the WSL again. 82, that's amazing. That's ridiculous. Not been in another 50 years' time, we're going to have Kirsty Dowell still officiating. Us. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be quite something. Um, let's get on. Stick shouting, boo at her. 
Um, the player of the match poll is in the chat, so make sure you vote on that. It's a lot closer than I thought. Um, Vilda and Hannah are neck and neck at the moment, so make sure you vote Ooh, on, on that one. Uh, we'll come to that towards the end of the show. Um, so it's between Vilda, Katie, Hannah and Leah for this one. Um, but as I said, Vilda and Hannah are quite far out in front. They're pretty even at the moment. So it looks like Everyone's got a vote as well. How inclusive. Exactly. We, I always like that. To be fair, I should probably shouldn't admit this. If I always see one that has none, I'll go on and vote on that one. <laughs> I don't like somebody just not having any because uh, I feel a bit bad then, but there we are. Um, yeah, there's obviously a lot of comments going on about what Alex just brought up as well. Yeah, I don't think anyone on here or anyone associated with the channel is going to disagree with any of the points that are raised in there. Um, right, we'll move on to the second half. Then obviously we started much better in the second half. It seemed to be a, a, a dominant performance. We'll talk about the, obviously the second goal, uh, Leah's. Um, Charlie, talk to us about that one. Because obviously, it's Salem's pass uh, through to Leah. Um, but the, I wanted to start with this. Um, we spoke about it backstage. We spoke about it on a WhatsApp group and everything else. But something you notice with Leah's finishing that seems to be a consistent theme, not the fact that she's scoring, but... The fact that she often the scores is, is the most important thing. I'm just interested if anyone else watching the show, because we've already talked about it, notices how often when she shoots, she falls over. And again, like I was saying, wasn't I? it's not a massive issue because she mostly scores. I just find it odd, I find it interesting, like un under sort of no pressure. I don't know if it's because she's being so powerful, the sheer force of her own leg is sending a bloody arse over bollocks, maybe. I don't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's yeah. turn today. Oh, no. Um, so it was yeah, Connor last week, Charlie this week. Outrageous. Mine wasn't as bad as Connor's, and Connor did swear, swear this week as well, I think. Um yeah, I don't know. Obviously, she scores loads. It doesn't matter. Like, it happened at the, the game at Old Trafford as well, um, another one recently. Just find it interesting. And if there's any any potential football coaches watching who who sort of have any thoughts on that, whether that's something you try and put a stop to or... I don't know. It's just find it interesting. It was a really good goal. Brilliant ball over the top from Zellum, who'd, who'd had a bit of a difficult first half, I think. A really good ball over the top. <laughs> TJ. Um, and then, like I said, really well taken goal, beat the offside trap. Just find it interesting. I'll never ask her. It's rude to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always fall? <laughs> if you're watching, Leah, why do you always fall? It's a fair point because the more so the more you say it, the more... Like, if you go back and watch nearly all of her goals, she's falling to ground when she's, <laughs> when she's scoring. Um, so it's a fair it's observation like to make. I don't know. But yeah, really nice <clears> goal. And probably one that could have got lost in the in the excitement of Vilders and Hannahs. But again, really well taken, really good ball over the top. Um, typical of Man United women, really. I think the sort of goal we like to score from open play. <laughs> <laughs> I it wasn't a good... You've got a reputation, it though, Charlie. It was a good finish. I just noticed it and now I can't notice it. I think that was more in reference to your swearing. No, I right. pointed it out. I probably noticed it more. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really sorry if I've ruined it for everyone now. <laughs> it's on the floor again. Um, there was a comment a bit <laughs> earlier up that I want to come back to you, Shane, on this one here. Um, Shane, obviously, Zellum's pass was the one that obviously led to Leah's goal. So you can talk to us about the goal as well. But this comment in particular, talking about how Zellum's been dropping deeper a lot um, recently. Um, and that second goal is in Spurs and England and so on, that she is playing those longer passes over the top. I mean, is that something you've noticed as well, that she's dropping deeper and playing that kind of long ball over the top now? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think the dropping deeper bit's a new thing because I, I remember, okay, you could tell me it was a year ago, it could be two months ago, I don't know, but I remember we were speaking one point about how almost Selim and Lad tend to do the opposite of what we think they would do on a pitch. You know, we always think Lad's going to be the DM, be the one that sits and Katie's going to go forward and often it flips around and Casey sits and Hayley goes forward and I think there's reasons for that, and that's probably a discussion for another time. But the, the long ball over the top is something Katie's always had in the locker. And if if you remember back to when we played Durham in the Cup earlier this season, when she came off the bench, I think Charlie, I think it was you and me were saying it at the time, that we were begging for a Zellan ball over the top in that game because Durham were trying to play such a high line that, you know, you put someone with pace on them. They were going to latch onto it, and it, you know, and you get a goal out of it, and it, it did happen in that game. We didn't score, but she came on and did exactly that and changed the game a bit at that point. So seeing her do it yesterday wasn't really a surprise. 
think the surprise more was that we stayed on side and put the ball in the net. But... <laughs> Particularly after that first half, I was a little yeah. bit. Uh, <laughs> a well, little yeah, bit I think I think when, when Leah got the ball, I was just there shouting at the line, going, "She's on, she's on, she's not <laughs> offside! Don't you dare flag!" I was, I was just waiting for the flag to go off. For, so when it didn't, yeah, happy days. No, hundred percent. I've got to be honest. I don't actually. This comment's too clever for me. I don't understand what you're trying to get at. Can, can anyone like understand and unravel that comment? Because I got, I don't understand. People it. understand who Colombo is first of all, Connor. Well, there's many. Your first problem. So Colombo was a detective. Oh, she's gone. Well, she's <laughs> she's very upset about that because Colombo's a man. So you just liken Charlie to a man. Miss Marple would have been better there, John. Um, yeah, she's not real. Yeah, look at that outrageous. But that's basically what's there, Connor. So. Alex has dropped out now. Charlie's dropped out. <laughs> but a few, a few halfway through this show. Um, um, oh, she's back. I've just heard the little beep in my ear. There she is. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> we thought you were so upset with John's comment that you decided to just leave. No, it was a good comment. Um, it just went really laggy. So I thought, oh, I'll dip out and back in again. See what happens. So why is it whenever Charlie's making a good point, she falls over? <laughs> um, it's been, it's been the power of the point she's making exactly and that's what yeah. i was going to get at, actually i think sometimes because they're trying to get such force through the ball maybe that could be what it is you know trying to get the power and trying to maintain the balance isn't the easiest thing to do yeah i'm just saying i would i'm not sitting here saying leah galton stop doing that thing that you do when you always score i'm not saying that <laughs> just noticed it no the most important thing is she's putting it in in the back of the net i mean barry for yourself what kind of what, i don't know just talk to us about the goal really like i said the pass obviously there's a lot that's been spoken about you know zellum dropping a bit deeper to play the ball over but leah down the middle uh, was <coughs> I mean, it was, it was uh, a good one i think prior just prior to that durham had had a ball that was probably their best ball in a game actually they'd been out on the right hand side they curled a little ball in which got in behind the united defenders but thankfully there was no durham attackers who could really get there. And um, I was quite intrigued by that. I wonder if it was going to be one of those where they just didn't have an end product, which clearly they didn't. But what I then noticed from that was that we were really starting to pressurise the ball a lot more. We were really trying to, to close the space down and, and ensure that we were, you know, using the press well. And again, it came from another throw-in, and this time it was a Durham throw-in. Hannah Blundell wins the header, which was, of course, never in doubt because there was nobody to challenge her. Um, but from doing that, Again, it was a nice little bit of play. The ball goes from her to Lucia Garcia. She's the one who gives it to Zellum. And Zellum just looks up and does what Zellum does. And it was a perfect ball. Straight over the top. It didn't. It was allowed to, to bounce because it was perfect to do so. Two bounces. Left foot. Wallet. Over the top. The goalkeeper helped her because she decided to come out and leave that space. So it was, it was one of those where Leah was never going to miss, really. Um, but again, for me, I'd just like to point out just in case you're wondering where I'm going with player in a match this this week, um, that that's another superb through ball by a certain player, uh, which leads to the goal. No, hundred percent. Sorry if you, I, I missed half of what you were saying there because I went to pick my phone up and it was just boiling off and they burnt my hand on it. So I was trying to pull my fan <laughs> over to put my phone in front of the fan. Right, I was talking to the proper <laughs> corner, not you. <laughs> so if you're wondering why I'm looking behind me, I'm trying to hold my phone in front of my fan to cool it down because I could not believe how hot that was when I picked it up. I'm worried my phone's on the break now. Um, Alex, anything else to, to add from your point of view on the on the Leah goal? No, I completely agree with everyone's, but I do think that it was handed to her on a plate by Katie when she you could see you could see Katie looking round and she'd passed that ball perfectly weighted right to her feet. I don't think there was much left on the finishing. I think Katie just lined it up perfectly for her. I think what was interesting with Katie yesterday, and you might not have seen this watching on FA Player, I'm not sure, but there was one point in the first half quite early on where Mary went down needing treatment. And while she's getting treatment, Kate runs over to the such line and then puts on a different pair of boots. Didn't notice that. To be just, so, just so she didn't have to go off and, and take any time out from the match. Mary was getting treatment and coincidentally someone's waiting for Kate yeah, we on the sideline with a fresh Mary pair of boots. Down, she hadn't even touched the ball. 
no, that's yeah, no, to be fair. There you go. Things that you pick up live that you don't see on the on the TV there. Because no, I didn't notice that one at all. Um, who scored the third? It was Blundell. Was it Blundell's? It third was Blundell. One? I'm trying to remember the fact so much. Was to say. Um, Beautiful goal. Hannah Blundellino, yes. <laughs> the uh, the kind of half volley. Um, Alex, I'm going to come back to you first in this one because me and you were chatting before. You said that Blundell was going to score. You did say it was going to be a header, though. Not not yeah, half right. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, talk to us about the the view of of that goal and and, and everything around that. Do you know what? Sadly, I didn't have a very good view of it because I think I was too busy talking when it happened. So <laughs> you've come to the worst person first. But I did watch it back um, to see, like, obviously what had happened. Because at first I did think it had come off. I, I don't know how I thought it had happened. But um, watching it back, she didn't have to put a whole body behind it and give it a good whack. Like she just she knew that it was going in no matter what she was going for it. But yeah, I didn't I didn't get it live because I was too busy chatting. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. I'm sure many of people have uh, have missed a, a goal because of those reasons. I mean, Shane, did you have a better view in the st- <laughs> in the stadium of the goal? I'm pretty. You know what? It felt like I had a really good view of that one. Um, I mean, there was a few chances just before it where it was like you know someone's had a shot mid hit. Deflecting everywhere. Well, one of those again, where we're like, we seem to be shouting shoot for thirty seconds and non-stop. But you know, it comes out. I think it's on her, isn't it? Gets the ball, and I don't know. Doran players all run into basically getting position and, and defending a line, and they've just left Hannah completely unmarked. And Honors played the ball to her, which you know, from where I was sat, just looked like any old sort of chip pass. But then you watch it on a replay from the other side, and. It's a really weird swerve on the ball, what Anna mm. manages to do. Like, she, her foot goes one way, but the ball seems to go the complete opposite direction to what you think. But, you know, either way, you know, it's good enough pass. And, and then I think it sat up so nicely for Hannah, but I was not expecting her to hit that first time. You know, I thought, touch, get it down and maybe, you know, dink it on someone else's head or drill it low. But she, she just hit it. And, you know, where, where did that left foot come from? Because he was almost like, like Anthony's goal against Barcelona, I thought, the control she put on it. And, and that one. I, I get where you're going with this, Highland. The, you know, in, but that kind of half volley fall into one side, yeah. almost kind of across the keeper, when that's what it felt like, or looked like anyway. It's quite, uh, it's quite mad, really, because both goals that she scored this season have, have been like, really controlled inside of the foot sort of curled finishes, where... We're so used to her being the one that's on the edge of the box where the ball runs out. She just bouts it one and more of the night probably goes into the back row. But, you know, if she's going to score those, take it all day long. Yeah, I think it was, um, again, it was interesting. And I'm, I'm impressed that I'm going to be the first one to say this. But you, you mentioned about them shooting. Uh, it was actually Vilda Barisa's shot that began that one. Uh, it's like a 30-yard stunner and it was dipping in. Goldie slapped it up against the bar. And um, that was what kicked off this whole thing. So, so Vilda could have almost had you know, her second of a game there. And she'd already scored a perler against Durham in the previous game in the Conti. So, you know, she she really knows she can shoot from distance against these guys. Um, but like I say, it comes off of the crossbar. <clears throat> and again, at that point, it was the pressing again, the passing that then started to happen. And again, it was a brilliant ball from, uh, and I can't believe we've all been saying it wrong for so long, on a buyer. Buyer. On your buyer. On your on your buyer. Yeah, on your bike. That is what he should have been. Um Can I just yeah. say what's really refreshing for the, to hear the stadium announce to pronounce the name right yesterday. Wow. It's, it's usually just not quite right, but yesterday the guy who and I haven't heard him there do the announcing before, the guy who we had, but uh whoever he is, bring him back because the pronunciations were perfect. And there we go. Um but then yeah. Blundell is exactly the same as uh, her goal against West Ham, I think it was, wasn't it? Where we were just sitting there going, who's it in that Perla? And it, it was Hannah Blundell. And she's clearly done some practising on getting these first-time shots in. And when she hits them sweet, she hits them brilliantly. And, um, yeah, absolutely brilliant goal. And uh, it was only at that point, really, that I'd recognised properly that at half-time, Mark had made the change to put Hannah Blundell at right-back uh, and on her at left-back, which was quite an interesting switch as well. So he, he was doing some trickery with Old Skinner on that touchline yesterday. 
I was going to say a lot of a lot of subs that came on, Honor and Hannah switching sides. There was a lot of I, there's a lot of talk about the commentary. Yeah, I mean, I put that in one of our charts. The commentary was for pronunciation because it said Russo wrong as well. I'm pretty sure you were saying Russo. 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 And, <laughs> and it was a, called Russo, but that's a nickname, isn't it? But if you well, don't it, know, it's fine. Just ask, though. Ask. Just ask. It was yeah, on your buyer. Was I'm like that's not even close. <laughs> like, not is it? Been on this season, but I know last season there was at one point there was a, like a I guess a booklet or whatever of teams. I think it was done by the FA and it was issued to media and broadcasters and whatnot to give to commentary people with player pronunciations, like and how to pronounce names and. Some of them, even though they're, like, they're so blatantly obvious, to see what they put in there, like here's the phonetic pronunciation, were quite funny. I'll have to try and dig this out and, and, and find some of the examples again because they were quite funny. Some of them. I was going to say you're going to have to find that one for us, that's for sure. Um, Charlie, come around to you because I don't think you've uh, you've had your point on this one. We'll also talk about this this switching of sides of the fullbacks. Yeah. I think it was you that actually mentioned this in one of our chats that they've swapped sides. Yeah, I, I think just generally it's really interesting what's happening with the fullbacks this season. I think particularly with Hannah, she was very much just a, just a fullback that hugged the hugged the touchline, really, wasn't she? And she just bombed up and down. Where she seems to spend quite a lot of time at the moment ghosting into different positions across the pitch, whether it's becoming a little bit more central, so Katie sort of drops back and plays a bit more of a quarterback role, or whether it's ghosting into the box or, or in and around the edge. Um, because she was totally un, un, unmarked for that goal. They weren't expecting her to be there which meant she scored a beautiful goal. But I just think we're being, Mark Skinner's been quite creative with how he's using them. They're not one-dimensional. They can both play across both sides. Um, they're both really good at cutting inside as well and adding an extra body to the middle. Um, and it's nice having two fullbacks that are sort of regularly assisting and or scoring. It's just it's just yet another dimension. Obviously, we still haven't got that 10-goal-a-season that season striker still it's looking like again this season. We have so many other players that are contributing a good number of goals, and Hannah is now one of them. A couple of goals, three or four assists, I think. Um, and she's been she's been the revelation for me this season. I think just before the season started, we talked about, I think um, Mark Henry was on the show, perhaps Barry as well, talking about which player do we think is going to be the standout performer. Um, and loads of them have been great. We talked about Galton and Tooney and Zellan, but for me, it's Hannah that's really gone under the radar and done a, done a brilliant job, a really good job. And it, I'm glad that it's not going unnoticed. No, I agree, and I think that comment's probably about right as well. Um, you know, when Jay comes into the side, I wouldn't expect to see it too much this season, but certainly going into next season. Um, and yeah, that's why I started laughing because now it's only me and Shane that haven't dropped out of this show. <laughs> so I don't know. I think his internet has just gone. So Shane, I'd be worried that your internet's good, <laughs> or me actually, that we're going to get kicked out in a second. Um, but I don't know what's going on here. But there we are. I mean, yeah, certainly there's a lot of talk about Hannah and the, the kind of the England conversation because, <clears throat> as it says there, never seems to be in the conversation. Mm. I think it's, well, I don't know why, but that's what we see, don't we? I'm quite, thought... happy. I'm quite happy for her to stay with yeah. us during the international break, so no problem yeah, with I'm, that at all. I'm, I'm the same, but I imagine for her personally, she's got aspirations. And I, I would have thought, like with the Euros, obviously Demi Stokes went as a, as a squad player who obviously didn't play, which she would have known. And then it felt like she was being sort of phased out. I don't think she was picked for the most recent international break, was she? And I thought that would be Hannah's Hannah's way in, really. Um, because if you look at the left-back options, like actual left-backs, nice. Connor's, in, Connor's on two screens, anyone noticed? Um, you would have thought of the left-back options. I know it's not an English show, but I would have thought she maybe would have had an, had an opportunity Perhaps. That's why I started laughing then because I could see Barry Luke's backstage point. and I could just see the. the, the <laughs> Did you cut out to do that? Did you cut out to do that specifically? No, I didn't do this for that. <laughs> I'm committed, Charlie, but not that committed. <laughs> oh, dear me, we've had it all on this show. Um, right, let's get to the second two goals. I'm going to split this in half. Um, so, or. You just cover both goals between all of you and uh, you should talk about it shorter because we have got quite a few more things to get through. Um, so the fourth goal, obviously, Russo came on, scored, I think it was six or seven minutes, I think, after she came on. And she scored again another Zalem free kick wow. <clears throat> straight onto Russo's head. Um, and the second goal again, another set piece, obviously, Millie Turner this time that, that nodded it down and, and Paris was the one that kind of nodded it, or well, not nodded it home, it kind of came off her shin, really, didn't it? it kind of toe pokes at home from 
from a <laughs> from a yard out. Um, Shane, I come to you first. And those two goals, then, what did you you make of those again? Both both set pieces. Yeah, I, I think you could say it coming because I mean, once a three and up against Durham, Durham ain't got a chance of coming back into it. You know that that like Durham always have a chance if you, if there's one goal in it. We, you know, and we've been guilty of that both times we played them in the cup the last two seasons. But you know, the the, the two goal and the three goal margin just gave us a lot more freedom. Um, they were getting ratty, which is why we kept getting little free kicks. Uh, you know, we're getting corners because they're just sitting back. You know, they're not going to go and attack the game anymore because they're not going to win it. So, um, set pieces are usually their kind of thing as well. So it was nice to score from two of them against them. Um, particular favourite was because I think I mentioned it earlier when their fans decided to stop blowing their little air horn they brought with them just as Katie was kicking the ball. So to, to score off the immediate next touch after doing that, I was kind of like, you, you keep tooting your little horn. Do it again, we'll score more goals. No, 100%. It's always nice to shut fans up, like I said. It's better to do it on the pitch like that than and it does. So, well, I don't know whether they did shut up after that. I'm assuming not, but... Yeah, exactly. oh, I'm, I'm fine with it. That's the kind of fan band that we want. You know, if, you oh, know there was no malice in it or anything like that. And you know, we've we've always had a bit of needle with the Durham lot anyway. So it, it was nice to have a, a bit of back and forth with uh, with an opposition fan group for once. No, hundred percent, Alex. For yourself, what did you make of those two goals? Like I said, another two set pieces. Um, you know, we're scoring a lot of those this season. The first one, obviously, the Russo header. Someone just put in the chat. Uh, TJ a second ago saying nice header but poor defending no one's even touched her um, I think that's partly down to Russo's uh, jumping ability um, and the second one as well that's a little yeah the, the fifth goal the second of the, the set piece in the second half a bit, little bit scruffy but again it went in 5-0 job done <laughs> yeah I um, I think I think Alessia needed that I think with the way she's been playing lately and how we've spoke about it before, aren't we, about her being so like, heavily defended, her to finally get one in the back of the net, I think might spur her on now to to go for it a bit more. And especially, obviously, having that international break as well, I think it's given her a bit more confidence back. Um, I would have really have liked that goal to have been Millie Turner's. Obviously, I know Paris flicked it in on the last second. I don't think it had gone in off just Millie, but It'd have been nice for her to have got on the score sheet, but overall, like it was nice that every like each of the goals was a different player. Like it just shows that we don't need just one specific goal scorer. We've got a full team of them. No, a hundred percent. I mean, Charlie, is that the most important thing again? For the, you know, we spoke about this a lot this season. That again, it's five different scorers. And it's different. I know it's three set pieces, but it's five different types of goals. Not every set piece was the same. Obviously, one was a direct, the other ones a, you know, a header, yeah. and the other ones two phases of play enough on a corner. Yeah, we talked. We talked at the start of the season about the importance this year of having different options and different ways of attacking and, and different ways of breaking teams down. I think we clearly have that now, and I think we've also said we need to score more goals. It doesn't matter who's scoring them as long as somebody is. I mean, for like Russo, I've literally my notes literally say standard goal from Russo. Uh, Zellum cross, Russo scores, um, and the keeper couldn't react. So it was a powerful header. And with Nikita Paris, it was just, uh, it's, uh, my notes is what someone's comment just said. It's basically just a scruffy poacher's goal. So she anticipates this is a crowded box. There are two or three Bir- um, Birmingham Durham players on the line and the keeper. It could be that this doesn't go in and that it's defended. It, I agree with Alex. I think it was going to hit the Durham player and then be batted away. So for her to anticipate that and get herself in that sort of position... I think, again, is potentially something we were missing before. Um, and I'm calling it now, FA Cup top goal scorer. It's going to be Nikita Paris, I think. How many is she on now? Three. It's got to be just three, is it? Two three against years. Sunderland, was it? Yeah. Was it two? Yeah, she got both of them. Yeah, she did, didn't she? Yeah, so there we go. She could be on for it then. Um, certainly exceeded expectations from from you know goal scoring numbers point of view but Barry talks to us about the kind of the, the fourth and the fifth goal and just you know again five different scorers and a couple of set pieces in there about absolutely I mean the fourth goal all came about from Nikita Paris being uh what can I be described as assaulted on the edge of the 18 yard box um you know if the police had been there people would have been arrested um big old kick on the leg that was so again it was another free kick and we've seen this routine all through the season 
Um, Katie Zellan whips a ball in. Leslie Russo gets on the end of it. Goal. Um, it's the same script, same ending. So we've seen that. I, I see people saying defence not all that great. Who cares? At the end of the day, Leslie Russo is, is a salmon when it comes to getting up above other people. She just rises and in it goes. So no dramas there. Um, in between those two goals, obviously, Durham hit the post, um, which was the closest they came to nicking a goal. And then, um, yeah, the, the last goal... It was a corner into the box. It was Turner, of course, who's had the header. It's been said before, it was definitely going to be blocked off the line. That was definitely not going in. Uh, nice that it would have been. Um, and yeah, Keats did a really good job, actually. If you, if you watch the replays, you can see how the ball is coming to the defender. And she's like really surprised that Keats has got in front of her. So she wasn't paying attention. Um, I'm really pleased. You know, I, I just think back to the beginning of the season, we were all told that, you know, Nikita Paris was done. You know, a nothing player. She only scored one goal last season. How could she be any good? Was well, three just in the FA Cup? So, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, th- I think it just validates ever a salmon, James. Yes, a salmon. You never heard of this? Wise is like a salmon. In case you've not seen it in rivers, salmon's they swim upstream for a start because they've got extremely muscular bodies, and they can jump out of the water like a salmon. Rises, whee, straight out. Do this. I- I, say, I got roasted early. Even I've heard of that. So if I've heard of it, then <laughs> you know something's wrong. If people in the chat haven't, because that's a first. <laughs> but there we are. Um, yeah. So there's a talk about Bunny Shaw. Sure, I know Charlie's opinions on this, but yeah, as TJ said, in response to Paris top score well, of the we FA can Cup, all, we can all score five against or however many it was against Bristol. No worries. Nikita Paris is getting a double hat trick against uh, Lewis or Lewis. I was going to say, yeah. Let us know which one it is. Is it Lewis or Lewis? Or Lewis? <laughs> There's going to be a lot of different pronunciations for, for that one. That's but for there's sure. only one that... that's correct, and that's the one we need to know. <laughs> to be fair, if the FA player was talking about that that player, there would be uh, Salmon. Why is it like a Salmon? <laughs> <laughs> he used to be a player for Derby County called Connor Salmon, and he did jump like a salmon mm. often. Bald man. I makes you what we'd be called, doesn't it? Mm. Shani. Beret. <laughs> Beret. <laughs> Beret. <laughs> that, that just sounds like you're speaking brummy to me, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, buddy. There you go. John's back on the channel. <laughs> Gee, man, that was a good impression, that. <laughs> Deary me. Um, right, we spoke about the goals and everything else. Before we look to wrap this one up, we'll come to the poll in just a second. Obviously, a word, uh, final of kind of thoughts on, on, on wanted to give, obviously, shout out to Mannion, by the way. There was a couple of comments about oh, that, the fact that she's yeah. back on in, in a competitive sense. Yeah. Back on the pitch, I was great for her, and obviously you could see her kind of emotion in her face when she came on and, and after the game as well, so that was great to see. Um, but I wanted to come back to Vilda Bo Risa because there's a reason she's on the pole, not just because she scored a great free kick, as you know, as Barry said across the show as well, with a couple of the other goals, she was instrumental in getting us the goals for the for the other ones as well. So I mean, simplest question for each of you. We're gonna do obviously a Leicester preview on Friday, but Shane, off the back of that performance, do you think she's done enough now to warrant getting more minutes slash starting potentially against Leicester. Obviously, I know Chelsea's further down the line, but, you know, we know Leicester, bottom of the league. Vilda's obviously on, off the back of that, um, be high on confidence and everything else. Do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, and uh, I wouldn't want it to necessarily be because it's Leicester, because I think that then degrades the point of giving her more minutes, you know, because if you're saying she's earned minutes, then she's earned minutes, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. So, um I wouldn't want it to be because of who the opposition are, but I, I certainly think she did enough yesterday to put her name into the hat, so to speak. And especially because she gives us something different, you know, she's one that's willing to take a long shot on, which we don't get a lot. So she's got a hell of a striker on her as well. I think we've seen that in a, in a time at United whenever she's played, she's certainly got a strike on her. Um, there's a there's a couple of comments that are, are contradict each other. So he's saying it said Lewis. And Dave saying it's oh, Lewis. winding me up. So I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> I'm very Lewis. Lewis. As, as the southerner of the group, that's what I'm going with. 
Which one? Uh, Lewis. I think that probably makes more sense. But I have caught... Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Surely it should be Louise. <laughs> you got to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark's made the point, Alex, that kind of we're talking about there off the bat. You know, obviously Vilda's yes. a great performance. Do you think that could potentially work? Yeah. You know, come in... I, uh, I'll go on, Charlie, if you want to. Can I jump in there? I, we were talk I've been talking about this as well, and I think... I get what Shane's saying. It shouldn't be like Vilda should come in just because it's Leicester. Or they weren't so straightforward last time, but this idea of just because it's Leicester. But I do think when you there are there are times when um structurally, formation wise, your team, it's probably not necessary to play two midfielders that are going to have to sit deeper at times. And I think this is probably one of those games where you can afford to play without Lad or Zellum, and it would probably be Lad. If we look at um, the teams that, or the likelihood that he's going to drop the captain is slim, but I think it could be either of those two. And then you could play, we said Vilda as the eight and Toon as the 10. I don't think it always has to be one or the other. Um, I think it would just slightly change the makeup of how the midfield works. But again, there's nothing wrong with being able to adapt um, potentially how you line up from a formation point of view also to suit who you're playing. I think it would show a little bit of more bit more of an attacking intent which I think isn't a bad thing um particularly when you're playing a team that is fighting for survival um so I think again not because it's Leicester but potentially the kind of the more time we'd have on the ball and the options that we'd have it would be a good good a potentially good idea to play a more attacking midfield as good a time as any don't know I'm on mute. mute. I'm just going to tell Connor he's muted himself. No one is telling you. Oh, oh no, no, Alex is gone. Oh, about to drop out again, Charlie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alex did. Oh, she was. Oh, Connor, we've, we've avoided the curse, Connor. <laughs> oh my life! It's, we've had everything on this tonight. What I was saying is, oh, and Alex is now back. This. Oh, she's kind of. I think. I think I've added this too early. It's not the hokey jokey today, is it? <laughs> Are you oh, back with us, Alex? Yeah, Alex. In. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> um, what I was saying was, as James has said here, you know, Leicester are obviously playing a lot better now. Um, they signed a good keeper from Bayern Munich on loan, um, which seems to have keeping them in a lot of games. Um, so it is going to be more difficult than well, we struggled in the away game. Let's <laughs> not be real, but you know, it is an option. And Alex, I was going to come to you with that question, but you know, talking about Barisa's performance, and do you think she's done enough now? Because you know, I tweeted it at the time. It's all about opportunity. She had the opportunity, and for me, she took it. I'd like to think she's done enough. Um, whether she'll get given the chance is a completely different question. But as a fan and someone watching, I'd really like... I'd like to see her at least getting more minutes. It doesn't always have to be a start, but at least more minutes. Because I think every time she's playing, she has proven herself, but at the same time... You don't know what Mark's thinking, and he, he's he's very set in his ways, and he? he sticks to what he knows and what's what's working, and he doesn't like to stray away from what's winning those games. But sometimes it's it's worth maybe struggling or lagging a bit in a game just to see where your players are at and what else you can work with, especially in those ones, those games like Leicester where you can take a few more risks. So it might be worth even thinking. Water. Oh, sorry, Alex. Thought you'd finish. Sorry. No, it's all right. Go on. I was also wondering as well. Like we were talking about the the last game before, where we did sort of we struggled a little bit, and that they sort of sat in fairly well, and, and we didn't break them down brilliantly. So it, it might even be looking at that. And I know they're not going to play exactly the same. They've got a different manager, um, but they're not going to be going gung ho setting on Football Manager, are they? They're not going to be going two at the back and and six up front. So they're going to look to be hard to break down. So maybe we struggled with that last time. Maybe it would be a good idea to play another second sort of number 10 type player um, who can create them some more problems creatively, perhaps. 
<laughs> certainly that's a, a discussion point that we will be having on the, on Friday, that's for sure. Um, so make sure you tune in for that one at 7 o'clock on Friday. But Barry, for yourself, Vilda Barisa's performance, like I said, it wasn't just a, you know well, the free kick we could talk about all day, but the free kick as well as a, a good performance as well. So I'd point out I really don't like Gianni Infantino. Um, and currently he's holding a trophy that's got the same sort of shiny top as his head and I don't like him. Anyway, um, yes, Wilder by Reese. Listen, where Eric Ten Hag has gone correctly with the men's side is that if somebody plays well, they play and that's it. End of story. He doesn't change it. That's what creates competition for places. Now, I hear you regularly kind of talking to me about Oh, I want to see rotation. I want to see this. I want to see that. But people have got to grab that opportunity. You know, you can't just get given a place just because you want it or because a fan screamed for it. But when you get an opportunity, you've got to take it. I think 100% we're all in agreement that Wilder Bay Reese are definitely down in one chug, 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 chug. Oh. Um, but I, I think definitely 100% she should be playing again. And again, not just because it's Leicester, but because. When you play well, you should earn your position and Tooney's got to earn it back. So for me, I think she should be playing. And what will be interesting is if she does play against Leicester and she does well, will Mark then have the courage of his convictions to play Wilder Bay Reese or over Tooney when it comes to the Chelsea game? That's that's the key for me. Potentially, if we're trying to keep the ball a little bit more, Wilder might be a safer option because Tooney is more of it. They can both create. But I think if you're looking to keep possession a bit more, Builder might be a better one, maybe. I don't know. Um, certainly one to, to look at this weekend will give us some indication into that. Um, before I end the poll and we come to the player and match well before we end this one off, um, something, Charlie, you raised at the start. Obviously, we've, we've struggled, about, uh, struggled against Durham uh, in previous away games in the past. Do you think the pitch had a little bit of a factor in this? Because obviously it's a completely different surface. We know the one, obviously, at Durham we've struggled on in recent... Uh, well, this season, this prime example, um, struggled away at their place in last season as well, albeit we beat them on penalties, still struggled in that game as well. What, Charlie, considering you raised the point, do you want to uh, start us off on this one? Do you think the pitch had something to do with maybe the way that the game went? Yeah, yeah I do. I do think, I think we've seen historically, um, I spoke about obviously the pitch at Durham, at Sunderland and at places like West Ham where it's a little bit ropey, we do seem to struggle there more. So I think it did... I think I think um, someone messaged me and said you can see on a proper pitch where Durham are playing against a side like Man United how much weaker they do actually look because sometimes a, a dodgy pitch can be the leveller, can't it? Um, you've got a team that's used to playing on that sort of surface and, un and is unaffected by it, whereas you've got a team that's used to being on pristine pitches from a from a competitive point of view and from a training point of view now as well. Um, I do think it's important to recognise that the initial starting lineup for this game was probably, well, it was closer to what Mark clearly perceived as his starting eleven than it had previously been in Cup games. I think clearly with the FA Cup this year, um, it's something that they're really looking at potentially trying to win. And I think you can see that in the lineups. And I do think um, that we are more commanding as a defensive unit when we've got Mary there because Mary's so much more vocal and commands her box much better. So that sort of strategy that Durham might have, which is just pepper the pepper the six yard box with crosses Mary just deals with those they're not a problem she just wins them every time um, but I do still think there are those things as well but the pitch is an issue um, I don't know what the Lewis slash Luz slash Louise pitch is like I can't remember um, so it'll be interesting to see oh good thank you Ian doesn't look terrible um, so that should then work in our favour but I think you find that even in, in the men's side of things sometimes when you go to like a, a league two um team sometimes it can be quite difficult because you can't play the quick game you want to play Bridgewater was the same obviously easily the better side we were but we just found it so difficult trying to control the ball and it bobbles over your foot or you half roll an ankle um so yeah it, ha it has an effect and I think being on the proper pitch when it was drawn at home I, I thought we're going to win this and we, we won it really comfortably I'm, I'm glad that we battered them because we needed that I think we need to sort of get that monkey off our back where for some reason, we couldn't turn Durham over. So having it at home was was helpful. No, 100%. I mean, Ian's saying the pitch doesn't look terrible. I've just Googled it because I've, I've no idea where they played. Why is there like a block of flats like on pitch side? It looks like there's like... 
It, it looks, I'm assuming that's the bar area or something, but it looks like a block of flats. Got hooks. I think you've got huts that you can buy like six people in a hut or something like that. Can you? Like, like director's box so. in a hut. I, I guess so. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I'm, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> so, you can see the, so you can see the image that I'm looking at because I'm, S- I'm Supposedly just... they have had the pitch relayed in the summer, I think. Is, is this the pitch? It used to be really muddy. Is, is that it? Because if that's it. <laughs> Like, yeah, that that, yeah, that's like, it. The that dripping pan. Like a cricket pitch, doesn't it? Like a bit of a pavilion y type. Yeah. Yeah. Type thing. I can't believe that. It's a nice little terrace to go beyond, I guess. But... I was going to say, yeah, a nice little standing section. I just didn't know whether that was like flats or like a pub or something. <laughs> it's on it's probably the clubhouse. But... <laughs> Dear me. Um, but there we are. Yeah, mostly standing. To be fair, most United fans are standing anyway when we're at games. Um, so. <clears throat> If you ever if you ever look back at I don't even know if they're available, but if you ever look back at the highlights when United played there in the um, first season, and I think it was I think Greenwood had a penalty saved and it just stuck in the mud on the line and then two had to go and like toe poke it in or something like that. Like, the pitch was awful around that time. Certainly, yeah. So we're going to look forward to it. That's for sure. And yeah, I, when I was searching like that, I thought is that definitely right. <laughs> You've got to be careful what you're clicking on the internet, Connor, absolutely. <laughs> um, name it the past think, zero, uh, don't they? <laughs> yeah, the pan zero. Very good, I like that. That's nice. Um, Lewis is a very interesting footballing model. You know, I don't know what people know about the club as such, but it's fan-owned, entirely fan-owned. Uh, you can buy shares in the club, you therefore get a vote and all of those types of things. There is complete equality. The, the the playing budget is the same for both the men and the women. Um, it's a really interesting model. I, I would encourage anybody who's watching um, to, to go and do that. You know, Google Lewis and sort of see the the way in which they're trying to do things there because they are quite a an interesting team in that respect with the things that they're doing. So, you know, kudos to them. It's just a shame that this is where their FA Cup journey ends because they're a nice little side, really. I thought you were going to go advise United fans to go and buy shares and then start trying to mess things around then. But Why would yeah. I do that? <laughs> Could well do. Listen, if they need investment, I know of a few people. Um, I can give Jim a call. <laughs> well, I've got a couple of sheet baits now. I can start <laughs> reading them up. <laughs> <laughs> all I need is to a couple of grand in there. Dear me. Um, right, I'm going to end this poll before it before anyone else gets any votes in. Is, has it come up in the chat? There we go. Um, so I'll just read out where, where the poll votes are and I can tweet you to see if you agree. So Katie's on uh, fourth with 6%. Golton for uh, third on 13%. Blundell second, 33 And Vilda, as expected, 46%. Are we all in agreements with that? That Vilda player of the match for this one? Or is there any objections to that one? Well, you know I'd have gone for Zellum, but I can't argue well, really with Florida. No, not an, ob- not an objection. I did vote for Hannah, but I have no objection Same. to, to um, Vilda getting it. Of course not. You muted. Oh. No, I know that. I know. Oh, I was just going to disconnect. <laughs> I know for some for some reason when it, when there's loads of comments coming into the chat, they're coming up with and like loads of heart things are flying off them when they're in the. When, whenever there's a comment that comes in on the YouTube channel, there's loads of like heart emojis that are flying off the person's name. No, I don't know why. People part liking it. I think you can do that on YouTube now. Oh, there we go. Then. Didn't know that. Um, there we are. Um, yeah, obviously, judging by the chat and most of the people who probably voted on the poll, um, yeah, a lot of people obviously agreeing. <clears throat> uh, but, Risa. but yeah, Blundell was a, a worthy second place and it was like, a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. So, credit to her as well. Um, I thought Barry was going to say something, then, so I stopped talking. <laughs> Whenever you kind of lean back, I think I think that you're going to like go on some kind of. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, fair enough. There we are. <laughs> um, right, we shall wrap it up there. Then we've covered a loss in the last kind of hour and twenty minutes or so. Um, we'll be back on when when are we live again? Wednesday night um, before the yes. United game, so it'll probably be a little bit earlier. Uh, we'll be about six forty-five, probably. Due to United, obviously the men's side kicking off. And then Friday, we'll be back again, a double preview. Um, so the men's channel will be live on Friday for the Liverpool preview, and obviously WFC will be back live on, on Friday at 7. Um, for the Leicester preview, that threw me off because I didn't bring that comment up, but I think Barry done that one. Yeah, um, it's a big player. 
If anybody's interested, if they've still got nothing to do or you're just trying to hide away from the other half, whack on the telly. Jermaine Genus has had a go at the Connor hair by the looks of things. So we've <laughs> got a new pass we can add to the list. Of, so it's some sort of trend that he's got here, you know. It's amazing. I definitely, so yeah, don't, I definitely don't want to be compared oh, to Jermaine happening. Genus. The best FIFA women's goalkeeper. I think it might actually be happening now. Oh, oh is it not? Oh, are we going to hang on for like two minutes? Burger. That's just popped up. That's the Chelsea goalkeeper for anyone that doesn't know. It's got to be Mary. This is the one that Connor would eat with a knife and fork because it's a bag. <laughs> there's a yeah, come in an argument with um. With uh, there's Mary Earps. Don't know who she is. It's got to be. I believe the uh, the FA player commentator would have called her Marie Ips. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know what this is. Do you say iPlayer or something? I don't even know. It's a, yes, it's on iPlayer. They're doing a montage at the minute. Uh, we all like a montage. Uh, Christiane Endler. I can't tell you anything about this woman. I don't that, know her. Um, She's got Leon. Leon, it is. I can just see the OL. Le Leon, Ooh. after she played at Paris for quite a while as well. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's funny. She, she won the league. Did she win the she won the league with Paris, I think, in France? Like Andy Lolly on a bit of domination. There's our Mary, she's on telly. I, I apologize if you're watching this or if you're not, I've completely taken over with this now. <laughs> but it was just it was meant to me, it's happened. Um we started one. Oh, hello. Bar it's, uh, Barry on comms. Didier Drogba is coming in with the award. Um, and another person I don't know, but she's got rather lovely shoes, though. Very, very, uh, very good. <laughs> Stephanie Lamb. Who's can that old Canadian keeper, isn't she? Not a clue. Couldn't tell you. Sure, she's Canadian keeper. Quiet. Hold on. Will we get done Mary. if they can it's hear Mary. It? It's Mary. It's yeah. Mary, yeah. Who's oh, the winner? Is. Mary Earps is officially the best goalkeeper in the chuffing world. Yes. It's amazing hero. what's happened since I built this, Connor. Amazing. We won a cup, <laughs> and now Mary Epps is the best goalie in the world. Is that guy in the front row just watching stuff on his phone instead? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Epps. She doesn't have an address. He was quickly, he was quickly <laughs> voting on the poll. That's what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, to be fair, I could have told you that three minutes ago. Some, I could have saved us all the countdown, and I didn't realise I'd just been tagged in it three minutes ago. So <laughs> Marion won it. I was looking at this, going, "Oh, she's been nominated." I already knew that, and it's not. It's a congrats that she's won it. <laughs> there we are. That's fair. Oh, this is best goalkeeper 2022. We're in 23. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Hang on, mute it. Mute, it. mute it. Mute it. I don't want to be copyrighted. Mute it. <laughs> Whoever's got that TV on. How can it be copyrighted? You can't see it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Of course it does. Don't be so it does. Because <laughs> we've got a really impression. It'd be funny if she dropped it now, wouldn't it? <laughs> the award. People do. I do. People do do Who that. Who did now. that? Was it Arsenal? The FA Cup two seasons ago. One of them dropped the trophy or something. Oh, they dropped yes, the lid off the FA Cup, didn't they? Or something. Certainly yeah, more so there you go. It's a nice think. way to end the show, Connor. Indeed. Perfect time. Begging not to be copyright infringed. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a lot of copyright things at the moment. Not with this channel, with the other things. That's a whole different story. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I know my, my legal ways around <laughs> things with copyright at the moment. That's for sure. Don't want any more of those stacking up, um, which I shall explain off camera. Um, but there we are. Um, right, we'll wrap it up there. Like I said, join us again on Wednesday. Like there'll be an earlier time to check the Twitter for that. Make sure you're following these guys. Um, obviously, as we, it's Lewis, Louise, Louis, or however you want to say him. Obviously, away in the FA Cup. So check out the Sports Club if you're looking for a coach travel down there because it is going to be a hell of a trek. Um, so if you're coming from Manchester or Birmingham, um, follow Shane or the Supporters Club or somebody uh, like that. There is a Twitter page for it. Is it still there? I, I've not seen it for a while. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's, um, it's MUW underscore SC travel. That's the one. So make sure you're following that one um, to keep an eye on all of those things. And we shall see you guys in the next one. Yeah!